because I would have come, come in and off. Colonel Sanders is down there looking at your hoo ha. <laughs> I moved his bed closer to mine because I literally I feel like I have an anxious attachment to him, and I think you're he a does helicopter well. mom. Yeah, it's bad. Like if I leave, like when I go to Arizona, he stays at well, either Heather or Derek watches him, and he just acts up. He'll like shit in the bed. Yeah, He'll like bark everywhere. <laughs> he just gets really sad, and I get sad. like I'll show them. <laughs> it's bad. It's a very bad relationship, but I love him. Just bring him to Arizona. Yeah. He won't yeah, he has his puppy license. We'll just, we'll just get him a baby newborn, slap a diaper on Wait. him. Good. Did I tell you guys that I have revoked his uh, his uh, fake? No, why? Dog? Audience members who are listening to this, don't hate me for getting the <laughs> fake service dog thing. You know, I was trying to move out of the country, okay? So, but anyway, I took him into Target with his little vest on, looking all cute and shit. And this motherfucker right in the most busiest section of target you know when you first walk in and there's like the cheap section and stuff everybody's like there he just sits and takes a shit in the middle of target oh like, no service dog puppy thing revoked <laughs> <laughs> revoked <laughs> immediately <laughs> you're done so yeah he's no longer a service no. dog <laughs> damn it he chip just- He's like, I gotta go, mom. What? You go. I guess when go. you gotta go, you gotta go. I mean, I can't. That's actually really it. funny. No, yeah, I feel bad for him. I mean, like, I don't like it here. I'm pooping on him. Yeah, we we can just go to the bathroom. He's just like, I gotta go. Like, yeah. It's okay, dude. I get it. Same thing happened to Eric and I once. Eric just couldn't hold shit. it. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> just took a <laughs> shit right in fucking Walmart, man. Good mom. Nice. <laughs> Oh, Dr. Meg. <laughs> Shit feels like uh, just. Ooh. Yeah, Laura, you are looking like a fine fox today. So you she got your, your lips done, your eyebrows are tinted, got, right? Yeah, I did that a while ago. I got the coloring just to like cover up the like weird discoloration that I had on my lips. So yeah. Here when are, are you dyeing your hair red? Do we have a um, confirmed date or is that still being planned? I don't have a scheduled date yet, but I've pretty much accepted it. And Dude, uh, I think it's going to look sick. Do you see like, Khloe Kardashian just said it too? Like the, really? a little bit more brownie, but yeah, she went cowboy copper, copper too. But she, I feel like she's someone that can wear any color. Yeah. And she could also do whatever she wants because she has a bajillion dollars. I was going to say, she could flip it any way she wants. Um, My hair is looking like hot garbage. So that's fun. I disagree. But well, it used to be a lot longer. Like the the length of my extensions has not changed. And yeah, my, but when they move them up and change them, where they're putting them is different. So it I will no, I think she is putting them really high because I'm like, I have the longest hair extensions that you can get from her. And I'm like, yeah. I feel like they look short. Do you do, thinner, but. do you do the sewn in or tape ins? I don't know. They're like the invisible bead thing. So but, I think it's a weft. Yeah, I go to her at the end of April and she said, maybe we just need to trim them. And I'm like, that will make them shorter. So How long have you had that hair? I got one of the roses brand new from, well, not brand new, but I got them last summer. And then the other row is older. So I think I just... It's lasting you a long time. Mm-hmm. yeah this year I told myself you know before I compete I'm just gonna get all fresh hair mm-hmm. so I'm gonna hold out I'll just deal with this for right now I think it looks good how are you doing Do you ask me yeah how are you doing enjoying your I'm practice? here I'm here I have my athlete competing on Saturday so I'm kind of yes. like she looks I'm great. getting ready thank you she does look good a little, little teeny thing huh Dude, she's well, five foot head. nothing. I mean, she's Laura's height, just tiny, you know. But she looks good, especially for her first show. Like, I was like, damn. She looks good. Natural. Can you say that? Yeah. Like 100% or like? Like, 
Will go snatty or <laughs> no, like zero percent. <laughs> like we are using thyroid from Morphogen Nutrition. Damn. Yeah. Like That's good. just <laughs> she's young, yeah. She's yeah, she's 22. Like she's about to graduate college. She's younger. Damn, she looks like a baby. Not in a bad way, but she's no, like, no, I know. Like she's great. got like like, a... like she's just it's I don't want to like hype her up and blow smoke up yeah. her ass, but like she's young, her muscles are like she has short insertion, so they're bubbly. Yeah. And since she's a smaller glass, <laughs> like it, oh, two pounds would like transform her physique entirely. So I'm like, damn. It's make her break for being five feet. It, it's, yeah. It can yeah. go great and it can go horrible. Yeah. yeah. And her parents are bodybuilders. So go figure. It's like, okay. It's, it's literally <laughs> like Chris water. Bumstead's <laughs> do- soon to be daughter. It's like, dad's a bodybuilder, mom's a former bodybuilder. Oh, that's so fun. But yeah, her potential is sick. That's good. Like, I'm absolutely just like elated for her, but I'm also like, God has favorites. Like, let's just be real. God has favorites. And like, Megan Santa Barbara was a favorite. Tessa's a favorite. And Laura and I are just like, we're trying our best. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> Ch- Even wow. Chip's like, I agree. I don't know what's wrong with him today. He's just been doing that. That's why, I, well, it's not why I moved his bed closer, but. <laughs> It's one of the reasons. I selfishly moved his bed. <laughs> he really did. I literally like scooted over there with my little wheelie chair. You look lonely, <laughs> Chip. Come on. <laughs> Come with me. He was too far. Is that a Stanley? What? Is that a Stanley? Your water bottle? Stanley. This is the ripoff one that Laura got me. Yep, it's a family. Oh, that's good. I was Because I was just about to be like, Wait, what does that mean? A fake fan, Stanley. Fake Stanley. Oh, Did you call yeah, it a yeah. family? Yes. And those are like Griffin. <laughs> <and Nika. laughs> it's a family. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck by. What are they like? Thirty five dollars for a water. They're bottle? like fifty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 50. Well, they're like 40 or 50. There was the, so that color was some type of limited edition that they were selling. I think it was solely at Target. People were literally standing other people up for them like there was like uh, shooting and all that crazy stuff because people wanted this limited edition 150 dollars whoa what yeah you say a shooting yes a scene over a stand. yes what's wrong with white women isn't that wild <laughs> the jets god damn that's funny not funny because that's not great but <laughs> just absurd i couldn't mm-hmm. imagine that's crazy like I have my like full gallon from Amazon, like that I just put stickers on, and it was like fifty bucks. But it's like I could kill somebody with this, and like <laughs> it's like a battering ram. So it's like if that I need to break is... down a door, it's just damn. Is that a half gallon? It's a full gallon. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like as big as my torso since I don't have a big torso. So it's like just for scale. Oh wow! Yeah, I measured my torso the other day for yeah. my weight. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm an 11 and a half incher. Wow. Here? From under the tit. From under the tit to the hip? Bikini line. Yeah. What were you measuring for? The waist trainer. For mm. skinny. Yeah. So was that like 69. a normal? <laughs> what? Are you just like a normal size waist trainer? Or are you a well, short person? I did the short one because I've used a long one in the past and it like just kind of itched underneath of my boob because it was I don't know and then it would just always roll I mean mm-hmm. I only wear them for walks or cardio I would never train in a waist trainer but yeah. still doing like the stairs or the elliptical it would just kind of roll at the bottom so I was like fuck this I'm just gonna get the short the short one so yeah mm-hmm. I dropped I made that mistake that was when I was telling you guys like oh yeah I bought them but I never actually wore it because mm-hmm. Same type of thing. It was too long because, yeah, or so, and then it was uncomfortable to like really do anything in. Mm-hmm. How do girls wear them out, like to the club? Like, what? have you seen girls like wear their waist trainer like out, out, mm-hmm. like to snatch? Like, how does that? I don't know. Shrink your organs, fuck it, or remove them, whatever. I saw a girl wear one at the airport. I could not imagine a more uncomfortable 
yeah. scenario. Like at the club, I can understand because you're when you go to the club, you've already accepted that you're going to be uncomfortable. You're wearing your your like tiny mini dress. You're wearing your slut stilettos. You're going to you want to look cinched. You've already accepted you're going to be in pain and have blisters. But at the airport, at the airport, like. I want to be as comfy as fuck because you already know, especially because I'm a cheap bitch when it comes to flights, that I'm going to be like in the tiny sardines. little seats. Yeah. yeah, packed in like sardines. Mm -hmm. You're already going to be uncomfortable. I'm already going to get filled up by TSA. And I could not imagine having your your triple compression, your zip them, your strap them, to have to, un just to untangle that mess. TSA. Yeah. That's crazy. I don't know. Some people are dedicated and I'm like, I'm not that dedicated. Like I'll, I'm like Meg, I'll wear mine in the morning for my fasted cardio or walks, but I'm not going to train in it. I'm not going to do life in it. Cause like it, it's not uncomfortable, but it's certainly not comfortable either. So I couldn't imagine just like going to Walmart, like, yeah, <laughs> don't breathe. Don't sneeze. Don't yeah, literally just don't like, think about drinking or eating anything. Just fucking exist. Yeah. Be good. I, I do want to say though, keeping my gut health in check, mm -hmm. doing my vacuums and wearing my waist trainer. I am still in my extra, extra small, this entire growth phase. Granted, I'm not on the skinniest cinch. I have had to like let it out because there's like three levels of the cinch. So mm -hmm. I'm about to be on level three, but mm -hmm. we're still keeping shit tight. And I'm pretty pleased about that. That's nice. Honestly, watching how much you were boasting about doing vacuums and stuff like that got me to be like, all right, fine, let's do this. I gotta, like, I gotta. It's, it's getting better. It definitely is. I lost, I lost a lot of core control when I had SIBO because you don't realize that like, it's just naturally descending. So mm -hmm. then when it's actually gone, it fucks with you because you're like, no, my stomach is still descending, but it's yeah. like, no, you have to learn to re in, in corporate control mm -hmm. and TVA and all that. Facts. And that's something like, because I'm, I'm not a very petite lady. I don't have that tiny waist naturally. Um, I just, that's something I need to work on, especially for this division. My fucking wide ass clavicles, wide ass waist. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> but that's, I, that's why I got the waist trainer. So I'm happy they reached out because those are expensive. Um, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I'm going to start waist training and vacuums, mm -hmm. at least like three times a week vacuums for right now. In prep, I feel like I'll be in a better routine, you know, fasted cardio, posing, vacuum every day. But right now. Yeah. If I could encourage you to do it every single day, like it really adds up like 10 mm -hmm. rounds of 10 second holds. Just when you wake up, like you wake up, go to the bathroom before you weigh yourself, just quickly just suck it in because you'll get to the point where you can like do rolls yeah. it's actually really cool like, belly I, dancing club. you literally like i can do rolls do, it. do in and out it's so it's i mean really weird i can it's do so a weird. pretty good vacuum without practicing vacuums which i'm pretty proud of yeah but i know myself if i say daily and i don't follow through daily it's just gonna i'm just not gonna do it so if i do three times reward yourself four with what what do you want yeah. <laughs> like I'm serious. Like I was <laughs> someone that like I need to do my mobility, but I don't want to do it. So it's like, listen, if I do my mobility every single day, I get two massages a month. So I do my mobility every single day and I see Robert. Yourself. Yeah. Damn. I like this. Yeah. Okay. Like I bribe myself. I don't give a shit. I'm, I got my toes done the other day because I was doing something that That's I was totally like, awesome. listen, I'll go get a pedicure to treat myself if I am consistent with this. I don't know what it was. Oh, it was my ankle mobility. Cause I would do my hip mobility, but I always, I fucking hate my ankle mobility. So I started doing my ankle mobility and then I got my toes done. So now I don't look like I have hobbit feet. I have like cute little feet. Ready for your only feet debut. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm getting mine done tomorrow for that. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, what is it? My week, I'm gonna be a weekend uh, foot finder warrior. It's gonna wow. be my side place. Foot finder is like a legitimate thing. Legit. You have to like put your Oh, your I thought you were like bullshitting with us. I did too. But foot finder? <laughs> it's a thing. It's like only fans for your feet. <laughs> people make bank. It's wild. What the fuck do people do with that? I don't wanna know. <laughs> <laughs> Meg and I made the same face. Laura's like, what do people do? And Meg and I are like, 
Wait, you. What do you think? People have you want? ever talked to somebody who had like a foot fetish? No. It's quite Maybe, weird. <laughs> possibly my feet are not very enticing because they're literally I'm not either. Like, a small child, so they're um, maybe pedophile attacks. Well, I was gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> oops, but no, yeah, yeah, that will be one of our one off conversations. I'll have to, <laughs> I'll share some shit, but wild oops. foot foot, 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 foot <laughs> fetishes are just interesting to me, they're not weird because you know, everybody has their kinks, I get it, but <sighs> a foot. <laughs> uh, but like I just mm -mm, no not for me not for me I like that people have their kinks yeah they do Perfect. I mean shit well there was some reel made about that on Instagram about this guy that was like jacking off in the middle of a work meeting and thought his camera was off but it wasn't and it went viral oh, oh. I forgot to find it and send it to you guys um, <laughs> I bless him God, yeah that sucks yeah, not not on company time, my guy. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> but it's fine if like your your partner fiddles your diddle, but maybe don't fiddle your own diddle on company time. <laughs> I just like <laughs> it's a little weird. <laughs> yeah, I could imagine like obviously if it was like your your significant other, but like yeah, I don't know if it was just like yeah, just getting like an urge oh. in the middle of like your weekly Tuesday meeting. It's like yeah. Like, 10 30 a.m <laughs> time to get the fucking <laughs> he's like all right guys <laughs> <laughs> gonna... that's literally how it starts he's like bringing out the tissues bringing... oh he's like getting ready getting stretched <laughs> gonna do some squats getting the blood flow jesus oh christ keep it classy people keep that poor guy <laughs> we're just like roasting him on this podcast i'm sure he's been been told worse oh, yeah That's strange so it's like bright and sunny out all of a sudden it's been snowing and raining all morning snowing in april snowing. is like unheard of snowing that's yeah. wild it's april yeah. when we got yeah. married in may it was may 6 and it was in ohio it rained that morning um and then when we were getting like photos and stuff it was sunny and then it started to lightly sprinkle and then it turned to snow mm -hmm. and then it rained again. And then we had a double rainbow. It was, ending. it was, yeah, definitely a very good ending, but it was just like, pick, pick, pick a, a, a weather, pick one. Yeah, yeah, always. Yeah. It's going to be 77 next week. Legit. I don't. Doesn't make sense. Ugh. Do you like ever get sick or like not sick but like when the weather changes you feel like like you know what i'm saying like congested and shit mm -hmm. yeah it's typical makes sense i don't know what it is here oh it looks kind of sunny but next week when i get to arizona it will be like 80 or something really? yo that'll be nice yeah right heat too excited it's 76 here today all right so pretty similar not too bad yeah, yeah. But it'll be dry though, so that'll be That'd nice. Be dry, yeah. Here it's humid, and you're just like, I just sweat instantly when I walk chip in the morning. Yeah, I'm just drenched. It's gross. But I'm not a weird person that likes that weather. It feels like jungly. Love it. You <sighs> should move to Charleston. Why do you still live in Boston then? I, you know what, I Massachusetts. I have to live in Florida. I don't fucking know. Yeah, you should move down south. Be be a swamp girl with Meg and I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, swamp slut. I like it. <laughs> the hair just naturally kind of wave. Yeah. Embrace it. Cut it out. Swamp slut. Uh, hu a human whore. Mm. Oh, a human whore. I was like, a human whore. I'm like, okay. As well. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, oh. <laughs> awesome. Oh, my God. I'm over Instagram, guys. I'm officially wanting to delete my account with all the shit that women are supposed to do. I can't handle it anymore. Same. I wish that that was possible sometimes. Yeah. You see people mm -hmm. like, I'm just gonna take a social media detox. And you're like, the fuck? And then they're on it the do. next day. I hate yeah. them when they're like that. But I legit, I want to delete mine too. Same. It's getting a little crazy out. Yeah. Here. Whenever I a girl shows me like her hoo ha doing that hamstring pose, 
I'll usually send it to Meg and be like, I hate it here. And then whoever like does that pose, I just immediately unfollow them. Like, yeah. even if it's someone I used to like following, I'm just like, I can't take you seriously anymore. Like, boop. Yeah. How about if we can't see our hamstrings without bending over, like we're showing your hoo-ha, maybe grow your hamstrings. Yeah. The only time it's impressive to me is when you're RDL RDLing more than like two plates. Oh, and yeah. they're like, like they're going, when the guys are doing that shit, I would, I'll watch that all day because you can actually see their hamstrings working yeah. and their fucking adductors. Like that to me is impressive. But like, if you're just like flipping yourself upside down, what are we doing? Yeah. Are we doing? yeah. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan mm-hmm. of that. Speaking of who has, I did a big thing today and grabbed myself for this. What so, so typically before. <laughs> Speaking of vaginas, I have an announcement, guys. <laughs> so I never had to go to a gyno because my PCP used to always do like exams, all that type of stuff. And then obviously, eventually, when you get a little bit older, you're like, all right, well, just for safety precautions, you know, get a normal from a gyno. Yeah. So I went and I didn't think I was stupid, just didn't even think about it, didn't cross my mind to be like, hey, I want a female doctor. So I go and mm-hmm. the doctor is legitimately a 90 year old man. And I'm like, <laughs> not gramps down there like oh god i want to leave wow. right now i just felt i felt like violated so i was like you know what we're not going back like maybe ever but the girl that does my lashes was talking about i don't even know how it came up but like she's like oh one of my really good friends is a gynecologist and i'm like really so yeah. she's like in her 40s or so and she's like yeah i'm like sign me up like i should go back just for like mm-hmm. Be yeah. a mature adult, and I felt way more comfortable that it was like, oh yeah, somebody I know, and it's a female. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna make that next step after having a traumatic right. experience, dude. I don't understand that. I under like I get it. Like we shouldn't put gender constraints on professions, but like, why are you a male gynecologist? And if some people may be okay with that, but they should absolutely protocol. So like yeah. I was a new patient, they should be like, should just have, so you know, yeah. this is the male doctor. Is that okay? Yeah. Are you comfortable with that? Because I, I would come people. in and Colonel Sanders is down there looking at your hoo-ha. Yeah. But... Like there should be some type of law <laughs> regarding that. White ash. <laughs> He's like original or crispy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to think like, the medical system when it comes to males and females because obviously like since the dawn of like the the early 2000s obviously the medical field has become much more diverse where women are not just nurses they're more doctors so Mm -hmm. i have to imagine he was from the time period where females were not like interested or could not necessarily pursue like phds doctorates mds and stuff like that and this guy probably just didn't retire so it's oh, probably okay. not just like creepy Colonel Sanders. I yeah. granted it definitely could be, but this just he just might be in the time period where it's like you had a, a dude gynecologist. Like that's just that was just your option, you know? Yeah. Especially, I mean, given his age. Yeah. But like no no the, exaggeration there. Like I yeah, was like 90. he could even still see. Wow. Like, like he's yeah. like adjusting his bifocals. His bifocals. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit. Ooh. Oh, that's good. I'm ha- I'm happy that your vagine chakra is healthy. <laughs> very, very happy. I'll do some whatever's before. What is this? <laughs> is this <laughs> oh my god. Uh, when you say chakras, I I imagine like someone doing like a seance, like dancing and all this weird like spiritual shit. Similar. I imagine yeah. people like getting sage and like burning sage and steaming yeah. their vagine. Yeah. <laughs> just sage the vagina. Just staging it down there. <laughs> Doing like, what is it, like a Yanni <laughs> steam? Oh, oh God. <laughs> Isn't that like a thing, like a Yanni steam? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? No. A, y- a Yanni? It's a vaginal steaming. What? Yeah, it's like everything you need to know about like vaginal steaming. Sounds like an advanced douche. I, yeah, it's. Have you ever douched? No. No. I'm not a fan. You have it. Oh. It's just a, <laughs> it's kind of like a neti pot for your vagine. That sounds so you weird. That freaking vinegar <laughs> solution of your hoo-ha, <laughs> and then it's just. 
just like That's squirming in my seat. That sounds so uncomfortable. Put in for more information with us. They make <laughs> butt ones too. Wow. <laughs> I just, I don't even know, man. But no, I just sent you guys what, what vaginal steaming is. Yeah, let me see this vagine steam. I'm collecting myself. Hold on. <laughs> it, it, the vagina withstands a lot. I don't even know, man. I just want to say vaginal. You just have you have like a cup of like your chosen herbs. <laughs> so essentially it's like Love word, vagina word, soup. Basil. Please. Fucking just take Italian seasoning to the vagina. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Meg's like chef's in kiss. Hot water. Well, I know what I'm doing tonight, ladies. <laughs> Dude, that's right. You you do you do your vacuums every day and you get yourself a vaginal steaming. That's what your reward is. That, I will still forever amazing. think of your vacuum experience of how excited you were for your musical instruments you created. That's right. Jesus God. Don't actually do I don't put steam up your vagina, guys. Don't don't actually no. do that. A douche is okay though. I do condone douching. And if you like butt stuff, maybe do a booty douche. <laughs> like, I'm just like, like I approve this man. message. <laughs> <laughs> On today's episode. <laughs> makes makes like, and sponsor me. If you, any um, vaginal or anal douching, please sponsor Meg. <laughs> oh my God. Eric's going to have too much fun clipping this. He's not going to know. I was like, what's the clip? clip? <laughs> All of it. <laughs> no, I guess. But yeah, I'm just like, honestly overwhelmed with, especially like I've noticed a lot of like male bodybuilding coaches have been like on a birth control and cycle syncing like tirade when it comes to like educating females. And like, again, I understand the importance of education, but I honestly think we're emphasizing the wrong things to female athletes because I'm sure you both will agree. Like when I first started bodybuilding, I didn't know how to train hard. I was so focused on if it fits your macros and fitting like as much food junk and quest bars into my macros as I could. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't take care of myself. Like my mental health was absolutely atrocious. I hated my body. I trained to punish myself. I over-exercised. Like I did all of the wrong things in the wrong mindset. And I couldn't imagine being like in this space right now with that same mindset being preached at that birth control is ruining my body. I need to be using chia seeds during my luteal phase and flax during my follicular. Like that would just drive me bonkers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And dude, I mean, I think a lot, I don't know what was recently in the news, but a big thing about birth control kind of hit recently. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Yes. But there are certain conditions where birth control can help the female. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that like that shouldn't be neglected. You know, yeah. um, we can't just group all birth control into, oh, it's bad. It's going to cause you to not put on solid muscle tissue. You're not going to be able to lose fat with it. There's sure maybe better alternatives for some individuals, but to like group it into like one size fits all. It's so silly. Mm -hmm. um, or to blame birth control on not being able to get somebody like stage lean or something like that. That's funny. Um, but yeah, the seed cycle, you know, I actually did try that back in the day. I bought like, like bulk seeds off of Amazon mm -hmm. and I just couldn't like remember during what phase, like to have the seeds, like, <laughs> I was like fuck this, fuck this. So I just tossed a bunch of seeds, but didn't yes. work. It was like <laughs> flax, chia, pumpkin, and sesame. I think were the four on rotation. Sunflower and sunflower. Yeah, it was. Sunflower. There's a yeah, lot I think of it was sunflower. Seeds, there were so many. It was so many fucking seeds. And sometimes you can't break down a lot of seeds, and you end up pooping the seeds out. So yeah, you're not a bird. Like eat seeds because they're good, but like don't expect it to get your your fucking moon period or to cycle with like what is it the red moon or the white moon and like a full moon or a half moon period. I don't know. There's <clears throat> Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like there's yeah. cycles. That no, fall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Clearly. I don't. Yeah. I think uh, people are. What, Laura? No, uh, people are just missing like, what is it called? Missing the trees for the forest or missing the forest for the trees. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, forest for the trees. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Don't do that shit. 
why do I get closer? Like you can hear me better or something. <laughs> I always do. Meg's like, it's for emphasis. <laughs> It was so funny. No, I thought it was funny yesterday. I, I had like shared on my stories just a conversation that I um, had with a client that was asking me about cycling training in coordination to yeah, where you are in your cycle. And like, I gave her my honest opinion on it because I will always be forward with people when it comes to health and all of that. And I was like, realistically, what you need to know is how to be intuitive with how you feel. Yep. If you feel like shit because it's day two of your period and it's your heaviest day of your bleed, pull back a little bit. Don't necessarily, I mean, depending on the severity of it, like still go and get your workout in, maybe do a little bit higher volume and do what feels good. If at that moment in that day, doing hip thrusts is uncomfortable because your lower abdomen is in pain or whatever, don't do it that day. But like, don't say, oh, because I'm in X phase, I'm going to train like this or I'm going to do yeah. this because like you're almost like self-sabotaging and psyching yourself out for what may not even occur I've yeah. had I've had my period that I fucking PR'd I've also had my period that I felt like I was new so like it really depends yeah there's just something about bleeding out of your hoo-ha and hitting a PR that just makes you feel like that that bitch you know but that's what I kind of talked about on my reel like it's okay to deload during specific times based on your biofeedback, like how you're actually feeling. Mm -hmm. But to say every three weeks, you need to take off from training or just do some yoga or some like arm pump use or whatever. Thank you. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but like, you know, that that's silly. That is how you're going to regress with mm -hmm. your training. I think it's so unfortunate because like women, we, we chronically overthink ourselves to death. And that's where fear mongering is so successful on social media because it makes you think that you're missing out or you're missing this specific piece of information. And that's what you're not seeing progress instead of focusing on the core fundamentals of what actually makes an impact when it comes to establishing overall health. But then also in the athletic field as bodybuilders and physique athletes, making sure we are still athletes, right? It's like, we don't have to like, play the victim or be pussies when we're on our period. Like we can still push and be strong, but also auto-regulate. So rather than teaching that like, oh, you're naturally going to feel weak. It's like, teach them how to auto-regulate, teach them why they might feel this way, but mm -hmm. don't hyper fixate on it. So that way they're still in that athletic mindset. And again, they're not like almost victimized because that for me is like, I don't like to be told that I'm a victim or that I'm weak or whatever, like, cause I don't, identify that way if if you will yeah definitely don't identify as your follicular phase but <laughs> um <laughs> but like the same goes for maybe biofeedback regarding their digestion because mm -hmm. a lot of women like freak out because like every single month even though you know every time at their ovulation phase they get constipated they'll freak out and be like, I think we need to switch up the diet. I think my gut health is bad. I'm like, okay, but like this happened last month too. Mm -hmm. Could be like tied to your hormones maybe. So explaining the weight fluctuations, how our hormones can actually impact our digestion goes a long way too. And that comes down to just coaching and not like you said, like the fear mongering. Yep. That is so huge, especially with like, hormones and like the functional side of all of this because mm -hmm. these people are vulnerable you know they're not feeling great they're having menstrual irregularities like they feel like poo poo mm -hmm. and we're gonna you know sell them our high ticket price because they're in that vulnerable position I think that's quite shitty yeah right? they're vulnerable and they're desperate like they just want to feel better and so like I said they'll, they'll see the marketing of seed cycling and like cycle syncing and doing three on one off is going to fix you. And then mm -hmm. because they are just wanting to grab on to any hope, yeah, logic gets thrown out the window and they're driven by emotion. And as women, that tends to be our downfall is emotions are great. Like I, I think it's really good to have emotion because that's what makes us, you know, live life to the fullest, but not to allow emotions to replace logic when it comes to the best interest of our overall health and especially like our mental health too. Agreed. I think you made a really good point when it came 
about like having functional issues and then letting your mind go places of fear because of X, Y, and Z you've heard. And I've, I've done this myself. I've done this, run into this a lot with clients, especially when it comes to gut cases, trying to re-implement variety of foods when dairy was removed and gluten was removed and then feeling like they can never have that again. Yeah. And that like, I had one client that would be like, well, I can't go to dinner with my boyfriend anymore. Like we can't go out Aww. because she was so afraid. Like what if she got gluten and what well, doesn't have celiac? It was just, she had SIBO and you know, we got through it. Her digestion was great. And then like almost forgot how to be a normal human after. And it's, it's hard to like, talk yourself out of it, but realistically you need to, as far as like, I'm going to be fine. I may have a little bloat after, but eventually I'm going to get used to having these foods again after removing them. And that's just like what bodies are designed to do. Even if it's something that doesn't make you feel the greatest, you're not going to die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that's something that I struggled with just like not even functional health related, but almost like functional health and the level of fear mongering and urgency can almost perpetuate orthorexia and like safe food categories because that's something that I struggled with even mm -hmm. a couple of years ago when it came to like how I viewed dairy and gluten and they were almost they were they were categories as fear foods where it's like I could only eat like rice-based products you know rice noodles whatever mm -hmm. and if it had gluten or if it had dairy well, I couldn't have that because you know I have like a dairy issue now granted I can't drink milk. Like that will just absolutely ruin me because I do have a lactose issue, but like I can eat ice cream and not die. I can eat a bagel and not die. So to actually get over those like mental tendencies of like safe foods and restrictions has been really helpful for me when it comes to just overall getting more mentally sound and being more relaxed with food. Because like, I'm not, I don't want to like put Laura on the you know, the, the hot seat, yeah. but like, I don't have an autoimmune issue. Right. So like, I really don't need to be as careful as my diet, not to say I should be a jackass and eat whatever and let my digestion go to shit. But it's like, I don't have to be as careful as Laura does because she does have an autoimmune issue. And I've honestly noticed significant differences where I am at, at that time in life when trying to implement different things. Like before I could not touch gluten, my whole body would swell my yeah. hands, my feet. Like that's always was triggered the most with me having the mixed connective tissue issues. If I am in like a good mental space, health wise, all of that, like, for example, last week I was away, but sick. I literally ate bread and cookies. That was it the entire week. Cause that was all I could stomach. And I was fine. So it wasn't, no shit. I wasn't wow. thinking about it. It was more so like, I need to eat something. I need something in my stomach, but like no issue whatsoever. And I haven't really had gluten consistently, like legit every day while I was there. No issues. Mm -hmm. What cookies did you eat? Just out of curiosity. Well, chocolate chip, soft baked cookies. Ooh. My favorite cookies, oatmeal raisin. Like one of those bitches. Mm. I'm, I'm not doing cookies for a little while. <laughs> Make I your legends. Little... I had, <laughs> I had a moment last Saturday and I'm not proud. <laughs> so we're going to switch to ice cream for my little treaty treat. I already talked to Ash about this. Yes. Oh, Dairy Queen had their new menu. Yeah. I'm so excited. I'm too. But crumble hiatus right now. I went a little too ham. See, so crumble would be a thing for me because they, they're just like so much like i'm a like plain person i ate four Ooh, i just stomach feel after four that. you get high and then you're just sitting there watching buck and step brothers eating that's okay. how all right maybe remove the weed from okay i guess i had three cookies because i had their carrot cake too so i had a cake and three cookies <laughs> i don't know if that makes it better but i definitely had like over three thousand calories in crumble I appreciate you. That was more than I ate the entire week yesterday. When I said I had bread and cookies, I had like a piece of bread and two cookies for the day. Like that was That's the most, that was the most that I could eat. I cry. God. Any of you people out there end up getting norovirus, I fucking pray for you because that was the it's worst. going around. Wash your hands. All over Literally your hands. wash your damn hands. Worst experience. Literally in wash your hands. Speaking of, this is like totally just like popped in my mind. You guys remember when coronavirus was like first starting up and we would literally have fucking videos of people washing their hands. Do you remember that? Where people literally would film themselves oh, 30 like, seconds. How? Yeah. I was like, that was content back then. <sighs> Do you ever think about that? Like back to that point in life and being like, wow, we were like 
literally fucking oh, animals just era. being pushed around yeah. through a maze. It was crazy. Crazy. Yeah. I also crazy. thought coronavirus gave you explosive diarrhea because I, when I heard everybody <laughs> going crazy to getting toilet paper, I couldn't understand what other reason would it be other than it makes you sick. I know. It just makes people so crazy. crazy. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Like, I don't know about you guys, but literally toilet paper was because Charleston's kind of like a peninsula and we actually lived downtown um, during that time. And, you know, we have limited grocery stores and we were literally out of toilet paper. So Eric and I literally got on Amazon and got like a little baby bidet. So like, you know how babies have like reusable diapers that you can like spray off? Well, that's what we got was a sprayable hose. So we literally got a bidet during that time because there was no toilet paper. Damn. Talk about a vaginal and anal douching. That's what we say. Had. You were douching without douching. I was douching before it was cool. <laughs> I've been doing it for a minute, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's like I'm a professional. I'm a professional doucher. <laughs> I'm surprised there wasn't more businesses, like small businesses and stuff like that, that when they were shutting everything down, that weren't just like, fuck you, I'm, I'm staying open. Looking back at it now. Well, there were in Florida. There Florida were. was crazy. Florida was like a totally different place. That's mm -hmm. true. Everything yeah. stayed open pretty much. Yeah, my a gym, I had a bodybuilding powerlifting gym that he like he only had select members that he knew wouldn't like narc. Like he would like literally text them be like let me know when you need to come train and I'll like open it up for you and I was like one of those special people. So like before I had to really get out the water and bamboo sticks that I was using for weights. Um I was actually able to train at my like dungeon gym but that guy was an OG. He did not give a shit. Like he was, he, he he's not American. I forget where he was from, but like, he was just like, fuck the government. Yeah, we had, we had a key to our gym. So that was very nice because I was in Pratt. Oh shit, you were? Yeah, because I competed in, you know, I was supposed to do the Orlando Pro for my debut, but then COVID. So oh, shit. That, my pro debut prep was shit because it was so long. It was so much longer than it I was prepped an to. entire year because of that. Same thing. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I was prepping, I'm pretty sure, from like December until January. December till yep. January. December till uh yeah. August, which isn't crazy, but like that's that's a decent amount of time to like it's definitely have to be on time. it. I started yeah. in January, I didn't get on stage until December 4th yeah oh she'll come back um that's wild i know what my friend was in prep and she was gonna do junior usas which is the one in charleston usually around like the may and they pushed it till i want to say august so she was in prep from december through the holidays january february march april yada 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 until august and May is like the perfect time to be in Charleston. It's before it gets like swamp ass, but like later to May, June, July, August, I mean, it's high 90s, low 100s and humid, like just 90% of just heaviness on your shoulders. And I felt so bad for the athletes because of their tan. Oh yeah. And then a mask on top of it. Oh yeah, dude. It was awful. Like we were, they were, they actually had the show downtown instead of at the convention center. And it was at the Sotile Theater. It's a small little theater and you, there's no parking. Like there's no parking downtown. So you have to like walk to the venue. I mean, the guys were just all, all they over. They have such a, touch a, such an advantage of that as like a marketing scheme, I guess you could say. Cause like, then they were like bedazzling math, the math for suits and all that type of stuff imagine what they probably tried for that ridiculous but what i don't get is like when you're on <laughs> like I don't know, which, you, on you can stage. have your yeah you can have your own opinions about masks and their effectiveness i you you can guess by my temperament what i think about the whole situation but like come on now if you're doing your individual routine and you have like your your fucking jasmine mask like your jasmine from aladdin like i don't buy that you know what if you were going to do that, I question this because so I did USA's out in Arizona and they did not make you ma wear a mask on stage. They wanted you to wear them like backstage and all that. But like when you were actually getting on stage wasn't an issue. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine paying? So I had V the makeup artist do my makeup like 150, 200 bucks, whatever it is. Could you imagine paying that and then being told to put a mask over it? I'd be pissed. I'd be pissed. Crazy. Is my like, 
especially because just like it's it's so expensive to do hair and makeup and like obviously like it's just covering your lips and your nose so like you get to see your eyes thankfully and your eye makeup is like definitely gorgeous but like i'd be pissed because yeah. like you have to not only pay for the makeup artist then you also have to get a mask too and like mm -hmm. Let's think about the fact that, like, what if you didn't do the bedazzled option? It looks horrible. Yeah, like you look like you're just sick. It's horrible. At least, at least the bedazzled mask kind of gave like a masquerade effect and kind of yeah, like, made it a little bit better. But yeah, no. Yeah, dude. I yeah, she's back. I think she said she was too slow with the charger. Oops, oops, all berries. Um. Yeah, I know. I give you ladies props for fucking competing during that time. That was awful. <laughs> well, Yo, <laughs> welcome back. Sorry about that. I literally knew it was gonna it was gonna die, and I was getting my freaking charger. I plugged it in and just. <sighs> cut off. So sorry about that. I'm back. Oh, Tragic. Really? What'd you guys talk about? <laughs> the dazzled masks. The dazzled masks. God, that was a, <laughs> that was a fucking sight to see, wasn't it? Yeah. Did you have to wear a mask for when you competed uh, at? Orlando? Not or in, Tampa, I mean? not in Tampa. No, that's good. Mm -mm. No. That's good. Yes. But I know we were kind of like doing this off the cuff and we're talking a little bit about like coaching shit with females and how it's kind of shit. Um, there was something I wanted to kind of string together with like prep and just dieting phases because the, you know, summer is around the corner. Mm, and yeah. I mean, some coaches um i saw this post yesterday or the day before this week and this girl is two weeks into her cut and her cardio is already at five sessions of 40 minutes damn that sucks yeah and she's not dropping weight so i'm like okay come on <laughs> and it's because her last dieting phase was not too long ago and I feel like these coaches, like they preach all this, like we have to work your food up. We have to do this, that, and, but then they don't stick to it. Yeah. And then this shit happens. So they think that they can just push like a lot of cardio on these females. And it's like, that may work for a majority of males, but mm -hmm. for females, I feel like cardio is way more of a stressor to us mm -hmm. and it's not going to help. Yeah. I think the problem there's, I mean, there's so many problems with our industry. There's the fact that everyone just wants to be fucking skinny and lean. Like we, there's not an emphasis, especially with the female clientele to put on quality muscle to like bulk without becoming a cow, like yeah. actual, like proper intentional bulking, growing muscle phases, whatever the hell you want to call it. There's just yeah. too much of a pressure to keep everyone so lean and skinny. There is pressure with the fact that if you're not constantly showing shredded physiques, whether males or females, maybe you're a bad coach. And it's like, there's pressure from the clients, there's pressure from the coaches. And at the end of the day, as coaches, you are being paid to yes, reach a goal, but you're also in a leadership position. If your client is coming to you after dieting for a year and they still want to continue to diet, it's your job to be like, no, like this is, these are the steps we need to do to get you to your end goal and think about their longevity. And it's the client's issue to either, or the client's decision to either buy in or be like, no, I don't want to do that. And then go hire some other knucklehead. But it's like, as coaches, if we want to do right by people, we need to start doing right by people and thinking about their long-term health and especially the mental component too, by resourcing out or outsourcing to like therapists and other people to like get your noggins straight. Because like, we can't always be dieting guys. We just, we just can't like life's, life's not fun when you're like constantly hungry and food focused, like it's okay to be a little fluffy. Like you'll live. I'm living. Yeah. I think you see like... a lot of oh sorry. No, you're fine. I think you see a lot of conflicting information on that. Um, when it comes to off season composition and what that's supposed to be. So just for those of you listening and whatnot, and I think we're all kind of aligned with this, is you should have still visible shape and yeah. maybe some visible lines, but don't expect to see like deep insertions and all of that. Um you know, there is definitely a point of demarcation that you're going too far and you're no longer putting on solid tissue mm -hmm. and you're just adding fat. Um, we don't want that either, but like it's somewhere in the middle and that should be something that your coach, you're hiring a professional should be able to visibly see and talk to you about. And mm -hmm. some people honestly don't have that connection that they care about gaining body fat. 
I've seen that with several wellness competitors that are like really happy and okay with their off season bodies and love and training slamming the food, like still look good, but probably putting on a little bit more body fat than maybe I would be comfortable with. It's really up to yeah. the individual. Yeah. And you also have to realize, you know, people do hold body fat very differently. Mm -hmm. um, I've always had leaner legs and that definitely shows in like my growth phase, like we're adding more and more food and I just keep kind of getting leaner. Um, obviously I have other things at play there too, but um, comparing yourself with that is huge on the gram. Mm -hmm. uh, what was I going to say? Fuck. Oh, you That'll made a change point. Too. Like the more muscle mass you add, the more your distribution will shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that too. If you're putting on solid muscle size, it's going to be closer to the skin and it's going to pop. Mm -hmm. That's how you get glute ham tines for fuck's sake. Sorry. I, I anyway, never <laughs> you grow the fucking muscle. <laughs> but that's not what I was going to say. You said the word change. And I think that's huge. I think a lot of people get fucking bored mm. and they're, they go to check-ins and they're like, well, why aren't we changing anything? We need to change something. It's like, why? Cameron didn't change my macros for like a good fucking two months. Yeah. That's like eight check-ins. And I was like, okay, noted. Got it. I'll just keep training. I'll keep following. You just have to keep going. Mm -hmm. like <laughs> we're not bumping up food every week and same thing like in a dieting phase you're not cutting food every week yep there's periods of just consistency and that's where people laugh because they get fucking bored yep. and it shows in your physique mm -hmm. they get bored so easily and like to also kind of go back to the body fat thing in the off season like mm -hmm. the body fat that you gain in your off season will be lost in contest prep right but the muscle you didn't grow because you were too afraid to put on a little bit of body fat, that won't magically yeah. appear. Like, I know some people are like, oh, I'm growing into the show. Into the Fuck show. off. <laughs> like, no. Like, it's okay to put on a little bit of fluff. Like, I am, for my my mini cut, the lowest I weighed in was, I think, 121. And I hit a new high of 138. It's like, you know, let's round up and down. 120 to 140 because that's 20 pounds in a, a growth phase and a lot of the size i have added this time around has been pure quality and austin's made very little adjustments since we finally got me in a surplus and added like the initial drugs and stuff and it's like i don't need changes i just need to be consistent and it's not always fun and exciting but it's not supposed to be fun and exciting that fun and excitement is seeing changes in your physique not changes in your programming yeah literally prep is like groundhog day it's the same shit over and over and if you don't like that bodybuilding is probably not for you mm -hmm. this is not like you just have to embrace the mundane honestly like <laughs> bodybuilding is boring as fuck and it's a lot of just repetitive shit over and over and it's not instantly gratifying even if you pump the drugs you know you got a, a compounding effect and it's consistency over time Silly gooses. Silly geese. <laughs> oh my God. What was oh. that? Did I send you guys that that one reel on Instagram where it was like, it was the prank for April Fools and the mom was like getting honked at. It was like, honk oh my, God. my Yes. Dude. And she called them, what did she call them? Goof heads? Laura, I have to send it to you. I think I sent it to you, Ash, didn't I? You, you sent it, it to me and I sent it to someone at my gym. But yeah, send it to Laura because that literally... Was the that funniest was thing so I've funny. seen in a hot second. But yeah, she called them goof heads, and that's she the new so handle. Upset. Goof heads. Goof yeah, heads. I send you a lot of shit. Don't be a goof head. Be a goof head. Yeah, no, I said I was sending you a lot of Dairy Queen stuff because I want to get the oh, yeah. Oh, that the right. cheat for this week. I yeah. okay, so here's the my birthday's gonna Me. be on Monday, so I don't really know what I'm gonna do because like it's Monday, like mm -hmm. I'm not taking off. Eric's not taking off. It's every Saturday. Well, Tessa, is, Tessa's show is Saturday. So I want to give like all my attention to her. Um, and then we're probably going to do something Sunday, but it's like, I don't know if I want to do brunch after I train shoulders or if we're going to go to Dairy Queen. But like, I also don't want to just think about it and fixate on it. I just want to like be. So whatever happens is what will happen. But Dairy Queen sounds good. Yeah, it it we have that. a little bit of both if that's what you want. Laura's like, just fuck it. Just, just do whatever you want. I, but I'm saying like, you can have some of both and not like go crazy on either if you're like 
feeling like you really want to have something. Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, I haven't gone crazy with a free meal since last growth phase, but yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, whatever happens is what happens, but I'm just so excited for Tessa. I'm not even excited for me. I just want to, just want to come to Saturday. Yeah. That's exciting. That's good though. Mm -hmm. I wish she was closer so you could go. Yeah. Well, no, it's wild. She lives out in Oregon. She's competing in Seattle. And then in September, she moves to Charleston. How did you connect? She was a referral from a girl that I was, we just sh shot, shoot the shit, shooted the shit on Instagram, just talked. She was like, hey, go hire Ash for your prep. And she did. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I bet she's moving close to you, though. Dude, it's wild. Like, just what are, like, what a quinky thing, you know? Like, just lives literally on the other side of the country and is going to move to literally the other side of the country. That's crazy. But that's like me. I don't know where I'm going to be next January. You can... Might be out of the country, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows yeah. me? But I was going to touch on this lovely post that I saw last night. Um, I was going to bash her name, but I'm not going to. But she writes, if you are looking to lose fat and gain muscle or grow your glutes, your first step is to combine weight training with a slight caloric deficit. The fuck? So you can grow your glutes and the okay, got it. Well, well back. Um, weird because I'm like pushing like 540 carb and I'm still trying to grow my glutes. Fucking weird. Vitamin Anavar. Uh, what right. Oh yeah, caloric deficit with some barbar. Yeah, true. Okay. With that bar -bar said, you don't want to put your body under too many stressors, mixing calorie cuts with intense exercise. How I personally prefer to train during a cut is keeping the weight high and doing lower reps per set as needed to make sure my body has more enough time to recover. I was like, okay, go ahead, girl. And then she says, but you may need more volume to grow your glutes in the deficit. So you may want to switch up to higher reps, lower weight. I'm like, you just contradict what? <laughs> so yeah, you can grow your glutes in a caloric deficit, keeping the weights lighter and higher rep. Like I was just so confused reading that. I was like, why are you a coach? This you ever did, why did so, people buy your stuff? Anybody comment like, um, I think you're wrong. <laughs> no, it's literally oh, my hair lady follows her. God damn it. Has um, someone ever said something so profoundly dumb that you almost don't know how to respond to it? That's kind of like what I'm at. I'm kind of like, oh my god. I just don't even know what to say. My brain's just like boring. <laughs> Oh, the time. Like I had a lovely lady uh today. Where was she? Where she go? Heather. <laughs> she was like, sounds like a man from all the supplements. And I told her to go get a hobby. And oh, I thought she, she meant the Heather, like the Heather that I know. I was like, Heather did not Heather. say that. Like you're like our Heather, like Heather that like I know. Oh. Like I Heather Heather. I thought you were like talking about her. And I was like, Heather no, did not say that to you. No, this is not. This is Heather B. Heather Wowlord. That's a terrible last name. <laughs> she needs a hobby. But um, yeah, I, just, I respond to everybody though, even if it's hate. I think it's fun. I think it's still attention. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we already agreed that maybe not all attention is good attention. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, what type of followers you want to get, I guess. For sure. For sure. No, I think just to kind of like wrap it up though, it's like when it comes to being a female athlete, focus on the shit that truly matters. Like the things that are not sexy are what work. So like making sure you are eating to nourish, eating to grow, not always trying to be in a deficit or not always worrying about doing a lean bulk. I'm, I'm not saying you need to gain 50 pounds and become a cow, but like be, don't be afraid to push some food and push some weight and be strong. Yes. Like you don't have to diet oh, every yeah. single year. What, what Laura? And then you'll you'll feel good. You'll feel amazing. Yeah. You'll feel amazing. And just like I said, like you don't need to switch it up and like hop into a deficit every like eight weeks into your bulk. Um also make sure you're maximizing the food that you're pushing before asking, like, when can I bump up the food again? Mm -hmm. Like you may not actually need another food bump. You may just need to bump up your training intensity. Mm -hmm. yeah no. so mm -hmm. and also making sure like you're eating enough before you start adding in drugs because i think it's so common that when we get into growth phases people are just like so when are we adding the drugs and it's like 
you want to make maximize. sure. You, yeah. Yeah. Like you want to make sure you have like the training volume, correct. And intensity, correct. The food set, because you need the food in order to grow. Cause if you don't have the right, like nourishment, the muscles yeah. have nothing to build from like yeah. drugs, just like expedite, like the growth. But if like, you don't have the bricks to build the house, you're, you're not going to have a house. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, prioritize the food first, get your training locked in, send your coach videos, sleep and recover like an athlete. And then if you are an enhanced athlete, then you stack, stack the drugs, but don't always be looking for changes every single week to your programming. Like that's not making you a better athlete. If you do get changes, it doesn't make you a worse athlete. If you don't get changes, like you get changes in order to progress. But as long as you're progressing, don't, don't fix what isn't broken. You know, I think I put a lot of pressure on myself in the coaching way because I would feel almost bad that I wasn't getting some of these changes, especially like in a deficit. I'm like, what do I say during this check-in? <laughs> like I need to do something, you know? And then I stopped that and I just, you know, gave them my constructive feedback for the week. Yeah. And that doesn't always have to revolve around cutting your macros or pushing more food or anything. Mm -hmm. like that. It's not what coaching is. 